Beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware, lest ye also, being led away with the air of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. The world's influence may not cause us to fall into a life of sinfulness, but it may cause us to fall from steadfastness. Peter's not so concerned that the Christians are going to go out and do all sorts of licentious things in the world and fall in with it, although that's a real danger. But what he's saying is this, that the constant bombardment of the child of God with the wicked conditions around us may just weary us and we may give up the fight. We just say, well, it's too much. I, I just can't take it. He says, oh, dear Christian, remember, beware of this. You know these things before. You can anticipate that this is how it's going to be. But remember the words of our Lord Jesus who said, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age, except for the last few years. Well, it doesn't say that, does it? Of course not. The idea that somehow things are different today than they were in the first century God is still with his people, and he's still able to get us through. It's still possible to be an overcomer. It's still possible to live a victorious life in the present day in which we live. And so Peter says, not only should you not be falling away from your steadfastness, you ought to be going on, you ought to be growing and developing, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, you'll notice the order here. You'll notice the balance here. Grace and knowledge. Grace without knowledge leads to emotionalism. Knowledge without grace leads to intellectualism. The one is a soft, mushy thing that isn't any good to anybody, and the other is hard and unfeeling and not much good to anyone either. We need the balance of heart and head, the balance of doctrine and duty, of practice and precept of grace and truth. And, says Peter, that's the secret. The secret of bringing glory to the Lord Jesus in this present evil world with everything else collapsing around us. We know that. We know this isn't the world to live for. Well, then he said, set your mind on things above. Set your goal, your objective, to bring glory to him both now and forever. That's the role of the church. That's the privilege of the child of God, that we might bring glory to his name both now and forevermore. 